You are Locked On Warriors Postcast, part of Locked On Sports Bay Area, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yo, what's up, everyone, and welcome back to the Locked On Warriors Postcast. I am your host, Eric Triple E Ingle. You may know me as the former producer for the Murphy Mac Morning Show on KMBR. And tonight, the Warriors can't overcome the New Orleans Pelicans' three-point barrage and a litany of untimely turnovers as they fall 114-109 at Chase Center. The gravitational pull of 500 pulling the Warriors back down to 20-20 and at Chase Center. One more game in the regular season, final game Sunday at home. The eighth seed is now out of the question and will very likely be the 10th seed and playing their playing tournament game on the road in Los Angeles against LeBron James and the Lakers. A gut punch of a loss. This loss is tough to swallow. We will break it all down, but first I want to thank all of you for watching us on the Locked On Sports Bay Area YouTube channel. If you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now if you're listening on the locked on warriors podcast feed thanks for tuning in there however you're getting the show we appreciate you make sure to check out the locked on warriors daily show for more in-depth coverage cyrus does a great job first quarter and this one looked good for the warriors defense was flying around pelicans were missing some shots Uh, warriors were scoring a ton of points in the paint they led 26 to 17 at the end of their first quarter they weren't really shooting that well but they were forcing the Pelicans to to take some bad shots and they were missing a bunch from three point land. Just one of eight in that first quarter, 26, uh, 27% shooting from the field uh, held the Pelicans to just seven of 26 from the field. Their defense looked on fire to start this one. Again, the Warriors weren't shooting that well to start off. Uh, The Pelicans did a really good job tonight on defense of making players not named Stephen Curry and Clay Thompson shoot the ball early on in this one. And tons of of double teams and ball pressure on the Splash Brothers. They really ratcheted up the defense against those two. Just 37.5% shooting from the field. Two of eight from three-point land in that first quarter. TJD, Wiggs, Loon all had great minutes. This looked like it was just going to be a continuation of the Warriors game last night. And then it all changed. That second quarter barrage. Three-point barrage from the Pelicans. A 23-5 run. And, and the Pelicans could not miss seven of their next nine fell from three point land after one of eight in the first quarter completely flipped the switch. Uh, and, and that was pretty much all she wrote from there. Bad close to the quarter. Zion picked up an and one against Draymond. Steph did hit a shot right before the half to close it out. But they finish they finished that quarter trailing 42 to 48 after that big first first quarter lead 45 to 42. In that second quarter, the Warriors were outscored 45 to 22 again in that second quarter. An absolute gut punch from Zion Williamson and and the Pelicans. And after (laughs) at halftime, remember what I just said? The Pelicans, you know, first quarter, only 26, 27 percent from the field. One of eight from three. Well, by halftime, the Pelicans were uh, shooting 47, 48 percent near from the field and, and had gone over 50% from three-point land. That's insane. Over 50% shooting from three after starting out just one of eight in the first quarter. They went 10 for 13 from three in that second quarter. Oh, my God. 30 points from beyond the arc. Warriors hit just three shots from deep to the Pels 10. 21-point difference from three-point scoring in favor of the Pelicans. And how often are the Warriors on the other side of this equation where it's the Warriors covering up all their other miscues with shooting with great three-point shooting and tonight that was not what the Warriors had going for them what they did have going for them was the same thing that we've been harping on for the last few shows was turnovers early in this game in the first half they need to fix this problem I don't know why they are so careless with the basketball early on in games but 11 turnovers in that first half that's not gonna cut it nine turnovers in that second quarter when when this massive run was going on for the Pelicans. Uh, The Warriors just couldn't score, just could not score during that stretch. And a lot of it was because they're just giving the ball away. And this has been a problem. We 
we've said multiple times you can beat teams like the Blazers, like the Hornets, like the Spurs, when you want to turn the ball over 20 times a game, but you're not going to beat a team like the New Orleans Pelicans who might win 50 games this season if they can close out the season with a win. It You can't beat playoff teams turning the ball over 20 times a game. You just can't do it. And the time, the timing of these turnovers, there is a cascading run going on, and you are just throwing logs on the fire. The Pelicans are are burning like like red hot on fire shooting from three point land everything's falling for them anything that they want they're getting it on offense and you're just going to go ahead and hand them the basketball and say here have a couple more shots you're just pouring gasoline on this fire and it's going to continue to grow and that's exactly what happened the pelicans never really slowed down from three point land in this one finishing 20 of 38 from 3 52.6% from deep and, and that was the big difference. Pelicans hit seven more threes than the Warriors. 21 points. That, that was the difference between the Warriors scoring from three-point land and the Pelicans scoring from three-point land. That's that's huge. You narrow that gap just a little bit. That You shrink that gap to half, and the Warriors win this game. The Warriors did a great job playing defense in this one despite the threes falling. Like They were up in the Pelicans' grill. Then that second quarter, they, they could have been a little more intense. Rotations could have been a little crisper. They could have closed out on shooters a little better. But for the rest of the game, for the most part, the, the perimeter defense was not bad. It wasn't a lack of effort or a lack of, of intensity on the Warriors' part. This felt like a playoff game. The intensity at Chase Center was ratcheted up to 11, and it was just too much from the Pelicans. They The Warriors ran into a buzzsaw tonight, and the Pels fighting to stay out of that play-in tournament. As much as the Warriors want to climb to the eighth seed, the Pelicans want to avoid falling to the seventh seed as much as possible, do not want any part of that play-in, and they essentially do that with the win tonight. Uh, the Warriors did shrink the lead to just three before Steph came back in in the fourth quarter. Uh, the, the Pelicans did push that lead to 88 to 75 just before the end of that third quarter, an 11 to zero run for the Pelicans in the midst, midst of that quarter. And the Warriors went about four minutes without scoring a bucket during that stretch. Tough, tough, tough sledding for the Warriors, but they fought back in this one. And that was a really good sign to me was the way that they showed up in the fourth quarter in this one. The Warriors shrank the lead to just three before Steph came back in. That was huge. Warriors just willing themselves back into the game and playing great defense, limiting turnovers. Steph comes back in and, and it was a three point contest after that is what it felt like. CP three drilling threes, clay drilling threes, Steph drilling threes, including a nasty step back. It was a, it felt like a playoff atmosphere. It felt like two heavyweights trading punches in the arena, in the ring and in the warriors. They just, they just had too many miscues in that fourth quarter. They had a turnover out of a timeout on a set play that can't happen it was a turnover between Steph Curry and Chris Paul when does that happen man these are two of of the guys that you trust the most in the NBA to to handle the ball in these crunch time moments and, and make the right play and not turn it over and there were just too many momentum killers in that fourth quarter when the Warriors started to ramp it up and the shot started to cascade in from Steph you saw turnovers turnovers just derailing them and then and they had another another turnover at the top of the key Steph picked up his dribble and rolled his ankle pretty bad and just kind of got stuck there in a double team didn't really have an outlet and no one really cut to come get the ball from Steph Draymond did but nobody else on the team decided to come back and help Steph I don't know what the hell was going on on that play uh, Steph tries to get the ball out to Draymond turns it over and the Pelicans score again I mean they're just they, they capitalized big time on points off of turnovers tonight. It was a big issue for the Warriors as as, it, as it's going to be when you turn the ball over 16 times. They the, the Pelicans turned those 16 turnovers into 25 points. The Warriors only 12 points off of turnovers. So if you're looking for ways that the Warriors could have crept back into this game, it's pretty simple. Limit the turnovers. I mean, you can't do much about a team being as hot as the Pelicans were from three. I mean, they're they're hitting 30 footers. They're, they're hitting shots with guys right in their face. That's going to happen in, in the modern NBA. That's that's how today's NBA works. But you can limit all of this damage by just not giving them extra shots, extra possessions. You don't need to be handing the Pelicans more three point opportunities when they're already pouring it in from deep. It just didn't work out for the Warriors in this one because of that was the main difference in this and in everything else was 
relatively equal. You look at the assists, you look at the at the rebounds. I mean, the Warriors really won the rebounding battle, but you look at things like assists and it, everything else looks pretty much the same. By the end of this one, the the shooting percent from the field was almost identical. Uh, the Warriors had a slight advantage at the free throw line, but it's it's the turnovers and the three point shooting. And somehow the Warriors could have outlasted this three point barrage from the Pelicans. I mean, they did a great job on second chance points, 18 second chance points to the Pelicans, seven and, and dominated points in the paint, 50 to, uh, to 40 when Zion is on the other end was incredible. Draymond did a great job at turning Zion into a volume scorer, 26 field goals, 26 points. They're uh, one point for one shot attempt. That's that's great. That's for volume scorers like that. If you can turn guys into inefficient scorers, I mean, Zion's going to get his points either way, but if you can make him inefficient in getting his 20, 25 points a game, that's, that's how you can win. And the Warriors did a great job of that tonight. It just wasn't enough. Too many turnovers, too much shooting yourself in the foot. Zion, by the way, six steals. Oh my God. That's incredible. The Pelicans have a really good lineup, man, a really good roster. They have, Herb Jones is basically the small forward Draymond, you know, that's, that's who, that's what he does there. And Trey Murphy, man, we, we got to mention six of nine from three for 24 points. He only made two shots that weren't threes tonight. And uh, CJ McCollum, the old, old trailblazer who used to just battle it out with the splash Rose when he and Dame were up there in Portland in, in the rip city, he had 28 points. 10 of 21 from the field, 8 of 13 from deep. So between him and, and Trey Murphy, this was tough for the Warriors. Almost every single Pelican hit a three-point shot in this one. The only guy who didn't was Valanchunas, and he's their center. He's their seven-footer. He doesn't take a ton of threes. So, I, I mean, you, you can't do a whole lot about that. Uh, Alvarado was plus 18 on the night. That's pretty incredible. Uh, the the energy point guard off the bench for the the Pelicans always doing his little sneaky steals and things like that. He uh, he did come up with a steal in this one as well. It's it, it it's tough for the Warriors when when you lose like this. I mean now you're looking at another playoff matchup with LeBron James, which is we talked about this before on the show. It's no easy task, and and the Warriors have battled it out with LeBron. These guys are very familiar with each other. It, it seems like it's just every playoffs, it, it ends up Warriors versus LeBron in some fashion. It doesn't matter what jersey dude's wearing. It's a Cavs jersey. It's a Lakers jersey. It doesn't matter. Warriors, LeBron, they're just destined to face each other in the playoffs at this point. It, it, they're just on a collision course every single year. <sighs> Tough loss, man. Tough loss. We got more to break down from this one. Chase Center Demons lurking big time as uh, as the playoffs loom. Maybe it's a good thing the Warriors are going to be on the road. And, of course, turnovers absolutely destroying the dubs in this one. Again, Warriors fall 114 to 109 to the New Orleans Pelicans, the eighth seed officially off the table. Stick with us. We'll be right back on the Lockdown Warriors postcast. I am your host, Eric Triple E Engel. We'll be right back. know that instant confidence boost you get from an outfit that makes you look really good that's what i get with stitch fix with stitch fix you get a stylist who understands your style size and budget they do all the shopping for you just for you it's the easiest way to update your wardrobe this season easily upgrade your wardrobe this year with a professional stylist that helps you find a new on-trend favorite that will work for you i i just give the stylist my size style and budget preferences I order boxes when I want to, how I want, no subscription required, and they send five just for me pieces plus outfit recommendations, pro styling advice, you know I need that. I keep what works and send back the rest. My stylist always sends just the right pieces, and the fit is on point. It's like they have style ESP. I don't know how they do it, but they just get me. Stitch Fix makes it all so easy. I don't like to shop, and they save me all that time and effort. Plus, I get outfits that like make that make me look good and feel really good, too. And if I don't love something, it's so easy to just send it back. Shipping, returns, and exchanges are always free. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash locked on. That's stitchfix.com slash locked on. Stitchfix.com slash locked on. 
passion, drive, and patience. The winning formula for your the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whatever you're into, speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay guaranteed, fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to make your car the mvp and bring home huge wins keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers Welcome back to the Locked On Warriors postcast. I am your host, Eric Triple E. Ingle, the Warriors, all in a gut-wrenching loss tonight to the Pelicans, 114-109. The eighth seed now completely off the table for the Warriors as a matchup with LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers at Crypto.com Arena looms large. The Warriors really missed uh, Jonathan Kaminga tonight. No Kaminga for the Warriors. You, you feel like he probably could have given that bench that lift that they needed. The bench had a pretty subpar performance for what they're uh, what, what they've usually done recently for the Warriors. I, I mean, it, it just wasn't enough all around. You, you, nobody in double figures. Moody and Paul both with nine. Uh, Brandon Pajemski with five and Kevon Looney with six. I would have liked to see more Kevon Looney in this one, honestly. I mean, it looked like Draymond was... He did a great job on Zion, but it looks like he could have got, you know, maybe a breather a little bit from from guarding him. And I think Kavan could have provided some good minutes in that. I don't, I don't know why he's only playing eight minutes in a game like this when when Jonathan Kaminga's out and, and the rest of the bench is, is pretty thin. You know, you got one, two, three, four, five, six DNPs on the bench and a lot of guys who probably aren't going to be on the playoff roster. I get that you want to be as healthy as you can going into the into the play-in tournament, the postseason, whatever you want to call it. But uh, this was a game that I wanted to see everybody out there. This this loss feels a little – it leaves you wondering if Jonathan Kaminga could have made a difference in this one. The Warriors only lose by five. I feel like he's going to make a difference of five points at least in a game most nights. So I have to assume that if they did have Kaminga, this game could have gone very differently for the Warriors – and tough to not have him out there. TJD played nice. Only 22 minutes, though. I, I would have really liked to see more minutes, like I said, from a Kavon Looney tonight when, when you have a limited number of big bodies out there. Instead, they played Chris Paul and Brandon Pajemski, both 20-plus minutes. Uh, Pods got 23 minutes, and, and Chris Paul got 28. I know that they were trying to come back and scoring, and they needed the points and all that. But you also got to limit, you know, turnovers and and limit <laughs> limit the other team from scoring. And I, I get the Warriors were trying to to limit three point shooting, but I, I feel like if you if you put Kavan in there and and you let Draymond kind of freelance a little bit, that probably helps. You know, let let Draymond play middle linebacker, center field, whatever you want to call it, out there in the middle of that defense and just run around and be a maniac and cause chaos for the Pelicans. That's what I really would have liked to see in this one. Honestly, it would have been nice to see the Warriors make a switch on like emphasize the defense end, the defensive end instead of the offensive end. Like the scoring will come. You got Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, two of the greatest scorers of all time. You need to get them help on defense. That's the main key here. At least that's, that's what I think. And also Kevon Looney is going to help you with not turning the ball over. He is a consummate professional. He knows exactly where to be at the right time. Every time makes the right play with the ball, rarely turns it over. It would have been great to have that, that extra kind of, I don't know, safety blanket out there, that, that extra kind of confidence in, in someone else in, in this lineup. And there are way, just way, 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 way too many turnovers. Steph had seven all by himself. And I know he had 33 points. I, I know he's Stephen Curry, seven to 13 from three, 16 of his 33 coming in that fourth quarter, by the way, 32 minutes played on the second night of a back-to-back 12 of 23 from the field. All these are great, but seven turnovers is just too much. It's way too much, way too many times where the Warriors trying to force a ball inside that they had no business trying to force in there. Just bad decisions with the basketball. That's all it is, is trying to force passes into a packed lane or or telegraphing 
you know, the same pass off of a pick and roll that you've done three separate times in the same game. Like you don't need to continue to do these things. Like the Warriors play so well, just kind of freelancing and reading off of each other with Steph and Draymond and playing playing that two man game. And obviously clay being able to knock down shots when the defense collapses to, to protect the rim from Steph when he drives, I would like to see more of that. Like the Warriors can make off schedule plays. I'm not saying they need to just run around and not call plays all game long, but if it's not there, don't force it. Like just because you called the play doesn't mean the pass must go in there. If it's not there, if it's not there, bail, do something else. You have one of the best players in like those freelance scramble mode, scramble drills in, in Stephen Curry that's ever lived. Let him go to work. And I get that you don't want to lean on Steph too much. I, I get it. We, I, I really wonder if he's just going to not play against the Jazz on Sunday. Uh, I think it's likely that he gets some rest. Uh, he needs it. He's been playing so many minutes. And, and the minutes that he's pl- been playing have had so much pressure on him. I mean, look at the way, again, another crunch time game for the Warriors clutch minutes game. And, and Steph is... Of course, the focal point, the great closer that the Warriors have, everything is going to run through him. His usage rate is so high and it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it, it can't continue to go this way. You need someone else to step up. We say this so much on this show. We need somebody else to step up and score tonight. The Warriors had four guys in double figures, Clay Thompson, 19, Andrew Wiggins, 18, TJD, 10, but Draymond Green, zero. It's that's tough. You need some more bench scoring if that's going to be the case. And again, no Jonathan Kaminga tonight. Feel like this game would have gone differently if he was there. It could have given the Warriors another physical element in this game. It, it seemed like they were kind of slow to a lot of these 50 50 balls, especially in that fourth quarter. And I think Kaminga helps you on a lot of those plays, on a lot of those possessions. Uh, no GP2 tonight for the Warriors either. He would have been big time in, in a lot of these possessions as well. Got to imagine with these two guys back, that defense looks a lot better on the perimeter and that offense looks a lot more explosive. It, it, this one's just tough. It's a tough loss. The Warriors did a lot of things good in this one, but just couldn't overcome the, the three point shooting from the Pelicans 20 of 38 for the Pelicans from deep 52.6%, just a barrage 60 points from beyond the arc. For the Pelicans, more than half of their points scored in this game came from three-point land. Sounds like I'm talking about the Warriors when I say these stats. It's not the Warriors. It's the Pelicans who did all of this. Uh, it, it's a good night when you can outshoot Steph and Clay. I mean, if you're the other guys, it's a good night when you can outshoot them. Doesn't happen too often, but tonight it did. Uh, tough loss for the Warriors. The eighth seed now off the table, but we roll on on the Locked On Warriors postcast. Stick with us. We'll be right back on the other side. More to break down from this game. And we gotta, we gotta, you know, look ahead to, to, to the Jazz, the last game, last regular season game of the season. We'll talk about that too. Stick with us here on the Lockdown Warriors postcast. I'm your host, Eric Triple E Ingle. We'll be right back. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's right, $150, bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. It's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Welcome back to the Locked On Warriors postcast. I am your host, Eric Triple E. Ingle. The Warriors lose a tough one, 114-109. The eighth seed officially off the table, and the Warriors staring down yet another matchup with LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers. These two teams constantly on a collision course with each other this whole season long, and it's been a battle. And you know what? The, the Warriors do have, have one more game in the regular season. So I don't want to completely skip ahead over that, but this is pretty much decided the warriors, this last game against the jazz, you, you hope they win this one, have some momentum going in. You also hope that they can rest some guys because the jazz are terrible. One of the worst teams in the NBA. I mean, just, just horrid right now. They're, they're one and nine in their last 10. They did win their last time out. 
uh, just nine and 30 on the road this season for the Jazz. And, and the Warriors, just 500 at home. It's the weirdest thing uh, that I've seen it, pretty much ever from this Warriors team. I mean, the Utah Jazz have a better record at home than the Golden State Warriors. I, I, I This is tough, man. This is tough. I think that it, it's so weird that the juxtaposition of this season versus last season, the 11 road wins last year versus the the sixth most road wins of all time in Warriors history this season. It's it's very weird. It's very, very, very weird. But if the Warriors could get one more win at home just to kind of get some momentum going in the playoffs, I think that would be big. And, you know, I think it's tough to lose the eighth seed. But the way that they're playing at home lately, I kind of hesitate to say this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm glad they're playing on the road. I'm glad that they're going to go into the Lakers house and whoop LeBron James and the Lakers. I'm happy to see them have to do this yet again. If there's anybody that I want to see the Warriors eliminate from the playoffs, because let's be honest, a championship run from this team from the 10th seed would be ridiculous. This would be, I think, the greatest championship of all of the Warriors dynasty championships if they manage to win this year somehow. That would be the most insane storyline that I've ever heard in the NBA. That, that would obviously be the lowest seed that's ever won an NBA championship. It would be bananas. It would be redonkulous. F figure out a word. That's what it would be. It, so it's very unlikely. On the way there, though, they could do some damage. I would love to see the Warriors eliminate LeBron James and the Lakers from postseason contention. If they do that, honestly, honestly, I'm kind of chopping up this season as a win. If they, if, if, if they beat LeBron and the Lakers, they bounce them out of the playoffs, get revenge for last season. I hate the Los Angeles Lakers, every team from LA. I've said this so many times. Every single team from LA can get it any day of the week. Dodgers fans, Lakers fans, Rams fans, all of you, I'm not a fan of any of you guys. Uh, I mean, there's a few of you that are okay, but in for, for the most part, I can't stand these teams at all or their fan bases. It's it's I just want the Warriors to eliminate the Lakers from this postseason so badly. I do not care if 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 they really win the championship. It's I mean, obviously, I want them to. I'm I'm just as much of a fan of this team as you guys are, but it's unrealistic. But what is very realistic is the Warriors could could bounce LeBron right over onto Cancun. It's a lot more realistic than them winning the championship. And that's that's what I'm rooting for at this point, honestly. I am rooting for a Warriors-Lakers matchup that results in a Lakers play-in tournament exit. That's that would be great. I would be I would be happy with the end of the season. You know, either way, if the Warriors lose to the to the damn Lakers again in the playoffs. I'm going to have the opposite reaction. I'm probably going to sit here and cry. I would be <laughs> so upset if back-to-back -back seasons, the Warriors are bounced from the playoffs by LeBron again. I, I don't want to see that more than anything else. Do not want to see that. So it all starts with getting some momentum on Sunday, the final home game of the year. What a season it's been. Very up and down for the Warriors. It's been a roller coaster ride. They've been one of the best teams in basketball in the second half of the season since since that you know they they spoiled that Steph 60 point game against the Atlanta Hawks and that was the turning point whatever was said in that locker room afterwards i'm sure was something to the effect of do not waste of this man's greatness he is not going to be here forever he's not going to live forever he's not going to play basketball at, at this level forever you got to you got to capitalize while he's here right now and i'm sure that's what the warriors talked about in the locker room <laughs> After that one, I'm sure it was a lot more heated than I just described it to you guys now, but the Warriors seem to took, have taken that to heart. Like they have really turned their season around. Yes, Draymond Green coming back from suspension did give them a massive lift, especially on the defensive side of the ball. It completely turned around this team's success and, and fortune early in the season. The Warriors, though, falling tonight 114 109 to the New Orleans Pelicans, now officially eliminated from that eighth seed. I shouldn't say eliminated, but now that eighth seed is officially out of reach. They are, of course, going to the play-in tournament. Let's go. Let's go. One more game to wait, guys. That's all we got. And then we get postseason basketball. Can we at least settle on, on calling it postseason basketball? I know, I know a lot of you got frustrated with me for calling it the playoffs. I get it. It's the play-in tournament, but it's postseason basketball. We got to get excited about it. We got to get ready for Chase Center to get loud. 
Um, if the Warriors get a game at Chase Center, they have one more game. Let's win this last one at Chase, man, and be over 500 for the season. You don't want to be the only playoff team with a losing record at home. Come on. Like, let's get a win at Chase Center. Send the fans home happy before the end of the regular season. And put a cherry on top, man. Like, like, Let's wrap this one up with a bow ahead of going to L.A. and facing LeBron. The King versus the Dynasty yet again. It, it couldn't be any other way. It couldn't be any other way. These two teams have been on a collision course since the start of this season, and, and they were last year as well. It seems like the Warriors always run into LeBron at some point in the playoffs. It's just how it goes. It's just how it goes. That's about all the time that we got for you guys today on the Locked On Warriors postcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. However you got the show on the Locked On uh, Sports Bay Area YouTube channel on the Locked On Warriors podcast page. However you tuned in, we appreciate you guys. I am your host, Eric Triple E Engel. We will see you next time. Peace.